third hymn. Crown him with many crowns, arranged by Andrew Reid, especially for this service. Words by George Elvey. From the rising of the sun to its setting, my name will be great among the nations. And in every place, incense will be offered to my name and a pure offering. For not my name will be great among the nations, says the Lord of hosts. Dear friends in Christ, as we prepare to worship Almighty God, let us with penitent and obedient hearts confess our sins, that we may obtain forgiveness by his infinite goodness and mercy. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us, that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways, to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy upon you, pardon and deliver you from all your sins, confirm and strengthen you in all goodness, and keep you in eternal life, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. 
Lord, open our lips. And our mouth shall proclaim your praise. O God, make speed to save us. O Lord, make haste to help us. Glory to the Father, and to and the to Son, the, and to the and Holy to the Spirit, Spirit, as it was in the beginning, in the beginning is, is now, now, and will and be forever. forever. Amen. Alleluia. Alleluia. The Lord is our light and our life. O oh, come, let us worship. Come, let us sing to the Lord. Let us shout for joy to the rock of our salvation. Let us come before his presence with thanksgiving. And raise a loud shout with psalms. For the Lord is a great God. And, and a great king, king above all gods. In his hand are the caverns of the earth. And the, and the heights of the hills, of the hills are, his are his also. also. The sea is his, for he made it. And his hands, and his hands have um, molded, molded the dry land. land. Come, let us bow down and bend the knee. And, and kneel be before the Lord, our Lord maker. Our maker. For he is our God, and we are the people of his pasture, and the sheep of his hand. Oh, oh that today you would hearken to his voice. Let us open our hearts and minds as we listen to today's reading. A reading from the second book of Kings. When the Lord was about to take Elijah up to heaven by a whirlwind, Elijah and Elisha were on their way from Gilgal. Elijah said to Elisha, stay here, for the Lord has sent me as far as Bethel. But Elisha said, as the Lord lives and, and as you yourself live, I will not leave you. So they went down to Bethel. The company of prophets who were in Bethel came out to Elisha and said to him, do you know that today the Lord will take your master away from you? And he said, Yes, I know. Keep silent. Elijah said to him, Elisha, stay here, for the Lord has sent me to Jericho. But he said, As the Lord lives and as you yourself live, I will not leave you. So they came to Jericho. The company of prophets who were at Jericho drew near to Elisha and said to him, do you know that today the Lord will take your master away from you? And he answered, yes, I know, be silent. Then Elijah said to him, stay here, for the Lord has sent me to the Jordan. But he said, as the Lord lives and as you yourself live, I will not leave you. So the two of them went on. Fifty men of the company of prophets also went and stood at some distance from them, as they both were standing by the Jordan. Then Elijah took his mantle and rolled it up and struck the water. The water was parted to the one side and to the other until the two of them crossed on dry ground. When they had crossed, Elijah said to Elisha, tell me what I may do for you before I am taken from you. Elisha said, please let me inherit a double share of your spirit. He responded, you have asked a hard thing. Yet, if you see me as I am being taken from you, it will be granted you. If not, it will not. As they continued walking and talking, a chariot of fire and horses of fire separated the two of them. And Elijah ascended in a whirlwind into heaven. Elisha kept walking and crying out, Father, Father, the chariots of Israel and its horsemen. But when he could no longer see him, he grasped his own clothes and tore them in two pieces. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Our psalm for today is Psalm 105. Give thanks to the Lord and call upon his name. Make known his deeds among the people. Sing to him songs of praise to him and speak of all his marvelous works. Glory in his name. Let the heart of those who seek the Lord rejoice. Search for the Lord and his strength. Continually seek his face. 
Remember the marvelous marvels he has done, his wonders and the judgments of his mouth. O offspring of Abraham, his servant, O children of Jacob, his chosen, he is the Lord our God. His judgments prevail in all that the world. He has always been mindful of his covenant, the promise he made for a thousand generations, the covenant he made with Abraham, the oath that he swore to Isaac, which he established as a statute for Jacob, an everlasting covenant for Israel, saying, To you will I give the land of Canaan, to be your allotted inheritance. God of our salvation, through the death and resurrection of Jesus Christ, you have fulfilled your promise to our ancestors in the faith to redeem the world from slavery and to lead us to the promised land. Grant us living water from the rock and bread from heaven that we may survive our desert pilgrimage and praise you forever through Jesus Christ, our Redeemer. Amen. Amen. A reading from the second letter of Paul to the Corinthians. Even if our gospel is veiled, it is veiled to those who are perishing. In their case, the God of this world has blinded the minds of the unbelievers to keep them from seeing the light of the gospel of the glory of Christ, who is the image of God. For we do not proclaim ourselves. We proclaim Jesus Christ as Lord and ourselves as your slaves for Jesus' sake. For it is the God who said, let light shine out of darkness, who has shone in our hearts to give the light of the knowledge of the glory of God in the face of Jesus Christ. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Thanks be to God. The Lord be with you. And also, also with thy spirit. The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to Mark. Glory, Glory be to thee, Lord. Lord. And he said to them, Truly I tell you, there are some standing here who will not taste death until they see that the kingdom of God has come with power. Six days later, Jesus took with him Peter and James and John and led them up a high mountain apart by themselves. And he was transfigured before them, and his clothes became dazzling white, such as no one on earth could bleach them. And there appeared to them Elijah with Moses, we were talking with Jesus. And Peter said to Jesus, Rabbi, it is good for us to be here. Let us make three dwellings, one for you, one for Moses, and one for Elijah. He did not know what to say, for they were terrified. Then a cloud overshadowed them, and from the cloud there came a voice. This is my son, the beloved. Listen to him. Suddenly when they looked around, they saw no one with them anymore but Jesus. As they were coming down the mountain, he ordered them to tell no one about what they had seen until after the Son of Man had risen from the dead. This is the gospel of Christ. Praise, Praise be to thee, O Christ. Yes. I speak to you today in the name of God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. Amen. You know, when I was a young boy, each and every Sunday, my father would load me into our family station wagon and drive us into downtown Toronto, about 25 minutes from our home. Then he would drop me off at the front doors of the cathedral where we attended church. And I remember so vividly the overpowering size of the cathedral. And as I entered the doors and made my way down to the Sunday school classrooms, the church itself painted with icons and angels, and I'm going to show you a picture of it. The church painted with icons and angels uh, really, for me, represented what we talk about when we talk about Transfiguration Sunday. It was awesome for me as a child and yet frightening at the same time. So every time that we celebrate Transfiguration Sunday, I hear the gospel words that describe the dazzling white, the transformation that takes place. And I can't help but think about 
the ways in which we are surrounded by the presence of God and can't then help think of the beautiful images that I saw as a child in the cathedral in which I grew up. Yet despite all that beauty, it's not the cathedral that I first felt the true effects of the transfiguration. For me, it happened one day on the way to school. And interestingly enough, I was in grade seven or eight at the time. And just as a subnote, I'll have you know that back then in the 1970s, we actually walked to school, uh, which I can't imagine asking my father for a drive. I don't think people did that back then. And I'm not sure how he would have reacted anyway. So this one day as I walked by, uh, and it was called Running Lead Baptist Church, I decided for whatever reason, and I, I don't know what the reason is even today, to just walk in the front doors. And so I did, and as I walked in, I could hear voices coming from one of the rooms in the back hallways. So I decided to go in and check it out. And much to my astonishment, I saw what was probably the largest human being, this teenager that appeared to me to be at least probably eight feet tall, I think. And he saw me and motioned me to come in. And as I entered in, I was immediately invited to take part in their Bible study. You know, afterwards, walking back to school, and I have to say I was a little late. Uh, but as I walked by, as I looked around, things had changed remarkably for me. It was as if I was looking around and actually seeing things for the first time, as if I was staring into the sun and had put on Polaroid glasses for the first time. Things seemed brighter, more green. Flowers looked more beautiful. And I knew for the first time that I had been changed some way. I think I learned a valuable lesson that day. The lesson that, you know, once we find God and understand who God truly is, we are changed forever. And unlike the dazzling gold paintings on the altar or the magnificent structure of the cathedral, I believe that what we are told today in the gospel reading that we read about the transfiguration is that Jesus is found for us each and every day in the regular happenings of our lives. So I invite you today to think back, think back to a time when you looked at someone who you loved with wonder and awe. And I hope you all do that today on Valentine's Day. Think back that, you know, when was it that you experienced life for the first time and you felt God truly in your life and you marveled at the beauty and simplicity. You know, some of us find it each and every day in nature, friendship or laughter, but whatever it is, that is the way the transfiguration works in your life. Today we read about it just before we enter into Lent. And it reminds us that no matter how hard life gets, whether we are faced with problems or tragedies, God is always with us and we are his children. So the story at its root of the transfiguration is meant to inform us of who God is, truly divinity in the midst of our humanity and the beauty of what lies in the knowledge that once we accept Jesus into our lives and we invite him into it, nothing will ever change. And so as we head into Lent, we ask God to heal us, to uphold us, and most of all, to love us. Because if we accept that truth, we are changed forever. Amen. Let us confess our faith as together we say the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty create of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died and was buried. He descended to the dead. And on the third day he rose again, he ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. 
I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Let us join in a prayer to the people. In peace, let us pray to the Lord, saying, Lord, have mercy. For peace from on high and for our salvation, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the peace of the whole world, for the welfare of the Holy Church of God, and for the bishop and the clergy of the Diocese of Eastern Newfoundland and Labrador, and for all the unity and for the unity of all, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. And in our diocese, we pray for St. Paul, Caledonia, the Reverend Cheryl Barker, Rector, and the Reverend Deacon Nancy McBride, and the people of that parish. We pray for Bishop Susan and all the clergy and people. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord have, mercy. have mercy. For Elizabeth, our Queen, and for the leaders of the nations, and for all in authority, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord have, have mercy. mercy. For this city of Welland, and for every city and community, and for those who live in them in faith, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For good weather and for abundant harvest for all to share, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For those who travel by land, water, or air, for the sick and the suffering, remembering especially, Vinnie, Joanne, Greg, Joyce, Kimberly, Ivy, Anne, Graham, David, Marie, Brian, and any others you know at this time. And for prisoners and captives for their safety, health, and salvation, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord have mercy. mercy. For our deliverance from all affliction, strife, and need, let us end, especially through this COVID-19. And for the strife and need, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord have mercy. mercy. For the absolution and remission of our sins and offenses, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord have mercy. mercy. For all who have died, especially those we keep in our hearts, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord have mercy. mercy. Remembering St. David and all the saints, we commend ourselves one another and our whole life to Christ our God. To thee, O Lord. Let us pray. Almighty God, on the holy mountain you revealed to your chosen witnesses, your well-beloved Son, wonderfully transfigured. Mercifully deliver us from the darkness of this world and change us into his likeness from glory to glory. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. And now, as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, Father who art in heaven, heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy, name. thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Lord bless us and keep us. The Lord make his face to shine upon us and be gracious to us. The Lord look upon us with favor and grant us peace. Amen.